So, so this is a standard agricultural uh, silo, is it? Dave? Yes, yeah, it's yeah. a standard agricultural silo that I just got. So any farmer, yeah. really anywhere, could. Yeah, yeah, yeah there's, this, is, this is regular technology then, isn't This is it? one of the ways that we can do it. You can build that, we could build a building, a wooden yeah. building if we wanted to. There's just different ways that we can right. we can do this, and this was economical to do. We can hide that if you don't want the looks of a silo on your right. property. Uh, and feeding this, uh, you can tell me again how you, this looks like a, a difficult thing to put stuff in, but you tell me it isn't. It is the same way as putting grain into a tank. When the farmers put a put grain into the tank, uh, they get an auger with the farm tractor, they come here and dump a tractor to the load and it's good for a month. I go, so so it's, once again, a month. it's again stuff that everybody would have yes. in a rural community. That's right. You have the farmer up the road here, I just get his auger, the tractor trailer comes in with 30 tons of, uh, of pellets and we fill it in and it lasts a month. Fantastic. Yeah, we don't have to touch anything, the ash, everything is all automatic. So Dick, here we are, we, this is in a container, We've o you've opened up the back of the container. Tell me about how easy the installation was for this whole unit. If everything was all pre-assembled pre up in, uh, in, in British Columbia, where they, they came in and everything was all set up uh, on a Friday, Friday morning. Uh, they got here with a crane, we set it down in the cement pad, and we put the silo up. And, uh, we had the silo up, and by Saturday afternoon, we had the fire going into the boiler. That's pretty. That's so pretty the whole thing really is, it just comes in the container. Yeah. If you've done your pad and your silo, and you've got your plumbing and your electricity ready to hook up, yeah. you're you're in business. That's right. Yeah. This is one of the ways that we can get them to be quicker. Uh, there's different ways of getting. Them. I can get the boilers, and we can do most of them from now on. We'll probably be doing them here to create the yes. work here, do the plumbing and stuff. But the first one, we got it coming in a container, ready. Unit Just going to sort of, I don't know if you can all see the inside of the container, but it's very neatly, very neatly done. Great. Now with a regular pellet stove, it, it, it drips pellets uh, into, the, um, yeah, into the burning receptacle. Is this what's happening here? Here it's feeding, big... it's pushing pellets inside all the time. It's okay. feeding, it's, it's okay. screw auger, and it's, it just feeds the pellets, it feeds the pellet in this. Every, every impulse of seconds you'll hear it there right, right now, right. it just feeds a few seconds. Yeah, that's fair. So for people who worry about the environmental issues here, Dick, what would you say to that? It's, uh, there's no, there's, it's very, very clean. It's uh, O2 uh, natural. It's uh, very, very clean what's coming out of the stack. Nothing at all comes out of the stack. There's an O2 sensor on the boiler that regulates the... The, the O2 all the time, which adjusts right. the flame, adjusts the air. So if it starts to sense something coming out of the stack, it'll it'll alter the mix and put more oxygen in, That's burn right. it hotter yeah. then. Yeah. yeah. We have the flue gas recirculating that goes into it too, that helps the fire when you burn drier material. It reintroduces the, the flue yeah. gases. And, uh, there's two cleaning, keeps the boiler efficient. Just kind of automatic. This is the, the automatic two cleaning here. Every I 500 see. 500 seconds, it'll blow some air into the boiler, keeps the so does that keep the maintenance right? Because I mean, yes. tube cleaning uh, traditionally, when you were running an old steam engine, you, you'd have to take the whole yeah. steam engine apart every year or so to clean it up. You don't have to do we, this. We still for have this. to after after so many like so many weeks, so many hours, maybe a thousand hours. We have to go in and clean them too. About a thousand but hours. At least something like that. Yeah, this I cleaned it once and we got seventeen hundred, and it's still running very efficient. You're moving great, the speed, different different pellets. We can burn chips or pellets with it. So okay. I can set the moving rates, the feed for the speed that I want. For so this fuel. is a very flexible fuel okay. furnace as well. So it, we could go to chips, which would be a lot easier, in the end, a, a lot easier to source. Yeah, a um, lot easier to source here on PEI, yeah. plus a lot cheaper. Yeah, a yeah. A lot cheaper. I mean, I'm paying about, I mean, if you go down to the, you know, the hardware store, it's between five and eight dollars a, a 40 kilo bag yeah. what's the equivalent price that you get for a hopper fill you know with tons of the stuff well, you, at, at the average is 320 from 320 360 dollars a ton yes. we can get it here bulk you know from two depends on the delivery uh from 220 to 230 240 a ton okay so you get this a lot cheaper than i do <laughs> In bulk, yeah. In bulk, yeah. And we so, Dick, tell me about how we can keep more money in the island if we move towards heating like this. Well, from from working in the forestry industry for uh, for about fifteen years, um, I can I can see that, there's, that we have a lot of product that we were shipping to the mainland 
and, and a lot of wood that that was left in the pulp wood that was that we couldn't sell as pulp wood. It was rotten. That was that was dry. That was dead wood. That was still sound enough that we could use to let the sun dry out here for the summer and in the fall chip it and use it as heat here to replace hundreds of thousands of liters of oil that we could burn into these, these boilers and the money would stay here. Instead. Tell me well, what it costs to heat with oil, with pellets and with chips. The school, there's a school, let's say just a particular school, uh, there's different sizes out there, but a school that would burn, or a building that would burn 230,000 liters of oil, roughly I just have those numbers in my head because I did some of them. Uh, they're, by going with oil or chips, you could save 100,000 a year. Right. Uh, by going with, with pellets? With pellets, with chips. With chips compared to oil. Oh, with chips is the yeah, best. With, with chips would be the cheapest, so you'd save 100. 100,000 per school with, on with, a, with on chips. On a school that would burn up to 200,000 liters, yeah. That is a lot you could, of money. With chips, you could, you could save up to 100,000. And 000. so what would be the payback then on a furnace like this for a, a school that was doing that? A school that size and the amount of oil there, the payback would be roughly in the three to four years. The wow. payback would be. Uh, there isn't an investment you could make today that would give you that return. Exactly. So there is. A, that's that's what it would be by a hundred thousand, saving a hundred thousand for a payback for that size. Fantastic.